Ernest Giles, William Ernest Powell Giles, July 20, 1835, November 13, 1897, best known as Ernest Giles, was an Australian explorer who led five major expeditions in Central Australia. Ernest Giles was born in Bristol, England, son of William Giles, a merchant, and Jane Elizabeth, née Powell. Giles was educated at Christ's Hospital School, Newgate, London. In 1850, at the age of 15, he emigrated to Australia, joining his parents, and took up residence in Adelaide, South Australia. In 1852, Giles went to the Victorian goldfields, then became a clerk at the post office in Melbourne, and later at the county court. Soon tiring of town life, Giles went to the back country and obtained valuable experience as a bushman. In 1865, he explored northwest of the Darling River in the Yankanya Range looking for pastoral country and land capable of cultivating hemp, as it was valuable for rope at the time. Giles did not attempt an organized expedition until 1872, when with two other men he left Chambers Pillar, South Australia, now in the Northern Territory, on 22nd of August and traversed much previously untrodden country to the northwest and west. Finding their way barred by Lake Amadeus and that their horse swear getting very weak. A return was made to the Fink River and then to Charlotte Waters in Adelaide, where Giles arrived in January 1873. Giles looked upon his expedition as a failure, but he had done well considering the size and equipment of his party. Giles' friend Baron von Mueller raised a subscription so that a new expedition could be made. The services of William Tiatkins as first assistant were obtained, and with two other men a start was made on August 4, 1873. The journey began considerably south from the previous expedition and from the Alberga Rivera generally western course was traversed. A month later in the Musgrave Ranges a fine running river was found and named the Ferdinand and by 3 October 1873 the party was approaching longitude 128 east. The country was extremely dry and though tested in various directions it was a constant struggle to get enough water to keep the horses going. Early in November, having passed longitude 126, a partial return was made and on December 20, 1873 the neighborhood off Mount Scott was reached. A turn to the north and then west was made and the farthest westerly point was reached on April 23, 1874. Giles and one of the men, Alfred Gibson, had been scouting ahead when the latter's horse died. Giles gave him his own horse with instructions to follow their tracks back and obtain assistance. Giles made his way back to their depot on foot in eight days, almost completely exhausted to find that Gibson had not reached the camp. A search was made for him for several days without success. The stores were almost finished, nothing further could be done, and on 21 May 1874 the return journey began. Giles named the Desert Gibson Desert after his companion. On June 24, 1874 they were on a good track to the Fink River and on 13 July 1874 Charlotte Waters was reached. Giles had again failed to cross the continent but in the circumstances all had been done that was possible. Giles was the first European to see the rock formations of the Okas, now known by their aboriginal name of Kadat Judah, and Lake Amadeus. He had wanted to name these Mount Mueller and Lake Ferdinand respectively, to honor his benefactor Baron Ferdinand von Mueller, however Mueller prevailed in him to instead honor the King Amadeus of Spain and Queen Olga of Württemberg. Giles supposedly discovered Uluru, formerly Ayers Rock but was beaten to the claim by a competing explorer, William Goss. Early in 1875 Giles prepared his diaries for publication under the title Geographic Travels in Central Australia, and on March 13, 1875, with the generous help of Sir Thomas Elder, he began his third expedition. Proceeding considerably to the north from Fowler's Bay the country was found to be very dry. Retracing his steps Giles turned east and eventually going round the north side of Lake Torrens reached Elder Station at Beltana. There the preparations for his fourth journey were made, and with Tidekins again his lieutenant, and with what Giles had always wanted, a caravan of camels, a start was made on 6 May. Port Augusta was reached on 23 May and, after taking a northerly course to clear the lakes, a generally westerly course was followed. Some water was carried and the party was saved the continual excursions in search of water for horses that had caused so much difficulty during previous expeditions. Towards the end of September over had been covered in 17 days without finding water, when on 25th of September the native Tommy found an abundant supply in a small hollow between sand dunes at Queen Victoria Spring, and the party was saved. After a rest of nine days the journey was resumed on 6th of October the course being still west. 
Ten days later the expedition was attacked by a large body of Aborigine Sanjals was compelled to fire on them. On 4th of November they met a white stockman at Tutra Out Camp, east of Bindi Bindi. Their course was west to Whaleping Station, then southwest and on 11th of November they arrived at New Norcia where they were welcomed by Bishop Silvato. On November 17, 1875 the party arrived at Guilford and Perth the next day, where they received an enthusiastic reception. Giles stayed for two months at Perth. Ty Atkins and Jess Young, another member of the expedition, went back to Adelaide by sea, and on January 13, 1876 Giles began the return journey taking a course generally about 400 miles north of the last journey. He arrived at Adelaide in September 1876 after a good journey during which the camels were found to be invaluable. Giles worked as a land classifier in the western district of Victoria from 1877-79. In 1880 he published the Journal of a Forgotten Expedition, it being an account of his second and third expeditions, then in 1889 appeared Australia twice traversed, the romance of exploration in two substantial volumes. This gives an account of his five expeditions. He made a number of other minor journeys and his last years were spent as a clerk in the Inspector of Mines office at Coolgardie, where his great knowledge of the interior was always available for prospectors. Giles was made a fellow and awarded the Patron's Gold Medal of the Royal Geographical Society in 1880 and was made Cavaliere dell'Ordine della Corona d'Italia, Knight of the Order of the Crown of Italy, by King Vittorio Emanuele II. Despite his explorations, the various Australian governments at the time turned their respective backs on his achievements once they had been completed, and refused to patronize any further exploits or give him much in the way of financial reward. Governor Sir William Jervois claimed on October 11, 1881, I am informed that he gambles and that his habits are not always strictly sober. After a short illness Giles died of pneumonia at his nephew's house in Coolgardie on November 13, 1897 and was buried at the Coolgardie Cemetery. He was unmarried. It was reported at the time. H. H. Finlayson in the Red Centre, Man and Beast in the Heart of Australia, 1935, said of Giles in 1976 he was honoured on a postage stamp bearing his portrait issued by Australian Post. Mount Giles, the third highest mountain in the Northern Territory, Lake Giles. 160 kilometers, 100 miles, north of Southern Cross, Western Australia, and the Giles Weather Station, near the Western Australian-South Australian border, were named after him. Ernest Giles was no relation to the explorer Alfred Giles, though they knew each other professionally. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.